if you did the deed I read my salah many times my brothers my sisters we are doing a deed but we spoil the reward of the deed and donate it to someone else before we've even walked out of the masjid because we started backbiting as we were walking out he says look at that brother you see yeah, he looks so arrogant what happened that statement that you made before you walked out resulted in your deed being lost so will you jaabil hasana on the day of qiyamah no you did the good deed, but that good deed went to someone else. Some people go for Hajj, they give charities, they give zakah, they make psalm, zakah. The hadith speaks about al muflis. A person who's bankrupt is one who does a lot of good deeds, but they have not invoked the mercy of Allah by protecting the deed. That's why we say your deeds are divided into two. The ibadah, the acts of worship are solely and only for Allah. But some of them are connected to other human beings. And if it is done for the sake of Allah, it becomes a deed that will bring about the mercy of Allah. It's your deeds. It is definitely your deeds and your deeds alone. I explain to you, my salah is for Allah. What else? My hajj is for Allah. What else? My shahada is for Allah. What else? My psalm is for Allah. What about my zakah? It's for Allah, but I've helped someone in the process. If I think I helped you, you now owe me. Khalas, my deed is over. But I helped you for the pleasure of Allah. I love this verse. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. Inna Allah yuhibbul muhsineen. Allah loves those who do good. Allah loves those who do good. Have we heard that verse? Allah loves those who do good. Have you heard the verse? Okay. When you do good to someone, why are you doing the good to them? Because they are good to you, so you do good to them. It's called tit for tat, right? Tit for tat. They did good, I did good. Are you prepared to do good to those who haven't even done good to you? Are you ready? Why? Because Allah loves those who do good. So if they don't do good to me, I'm still going to say, Oh Allah, you watch this. I'm going to show you it's just for your sake. I'm going to be good to this person. And you know what? They are not good to me, but it's okay. So you greet them, Salaamu Alaikum. And they look at you and say, hmm. They give you a dirty look. But you're happy. You're not sad. You're not depressed because you didn't do it for them in the first place. You did it for Allah. Your reward is registered with Allah and it's done and it's over. Subhanallah, change your attitude. Change your attitude. Do deeds for the sake of Allah. When you gave someone something, when you helped someone, when you helped someone cross the road, when you were kind to people, you were kind to them, yes. But for the sake of Allah, I don't want something from you in return. That's why in Surah Al-Dahr, Allah says, when we feed you, we have fed you for the sake of Allah. We don't want a recompense from you, nor do we want to thank you from you. We don't want appreciation, gratitude from you. If it comes, it comes for the sake of Allah. When someone does good to you, now this is the other way around. I was talking about we doing good to someone. But when someone does good to you, you must show gratitude because you're a mu'min. That's why. Because in order to show gratitude to Allah, you need to show gratitude to those in front of you whom Allah has chosen to do that good to you. Amazing. So this is Allah. This is the importance of the deeds that we have. Look at how I told you that Allah converts the deeds into good deeds. Subhanallah. Allah converts them. Those bad. Why? Because of the amil amalan. Salihan. The one who did the good deeds after the tawbah. That person deserves a big reward, great reward. Allah says, we'll give it to you. We're looking for it. Now let's get to this hadith. Hadith Qudsi that we're speaking about today. Remember, the theme is actions. So we, the, the final part of this hadith, it's a nice long hadith. And the topic is connected only to the last sentence of that hadith. Ya ibadi innama hiya a'malukum uhsiha lakum. فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَهِ Hadith of Abu Dharr al-Ghifari radiallahu anh in Sahih Muslim and in other books of hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says that Allah Almighty has said the following. That's a hadith Qudsi. When you hear the word Qudsi, it means the Prophet ﷺ is narrating to us what Allah said. 
in a version that is not Quran. See the difference? When Allah speaks to us through the Quran, those are the words of Allah. Cannot be changed, cannot be altered. You read them in Salah. I cannot read a Hadith Qudsi in Salah. I cannot say, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ Then I say, يَا عِبَادِي إِنِّي حَرَّمْتُ الظُّلْمَ عَلَىٰ No, 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 haram. I cannot do that. Why? Because that's not the deed that we were taught. But it's the word of Allah explained by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's a hadith narrated by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but the, coming from Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and I'm going to translate the last part first. He says, O oh my worshippers, indeed it is your deeds that I will reckon you with. Your deeds. The reckoning is happening with your deeds, my brothers and my sisters. Allah is saying, O oh my worshippers, your deeds you shall be reckoned by. Then he says, فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهَ Whoever finds goodness, whoever finds goodness should thank Allah. On the day of judgment, your book will come. Written by whom? By you. You wrote your book. So write it well. You are still writing your book. You are alive. Your book is being written. If you've made mistakes in your book, well, when you go through that book and you are doing the proofreading and the fine print and whatever else, those of you who might be authors know how many times you've got to go through the book and how many people you give to check the book for you. Well, well, when it comes to your most important book of your life, you can still delete the errors that have been made. By what? Tawbah. Seek the forgiveness of Allah. Do more deeds. Do good deeds. Write a beautiful chapter every day in your book. If you write a lovely chapter every day, you smiled at someone, you helped someone, you did your salah, you didn't miss, you dressed appropriately, you stayed away from haram, you stayed away from sin and abomination, intoxicants and what have you. What are you doing? You're writing a beautiful chapter. When the day ends, the chapter is plugged in. When the day ends, the chapter is plugged in. I was reading another hadith Qudsi in Sahih al-Jami' where the Prophet ﷺ says about the angels, that you know the angels on the left and the right. This is a, another very, very powerful hadith. The angels of goodness that write good on the right side, the angels that write the bad that you do on the left side, the angels of the right are actually in charge of the angels on the left. So when you do a good deed, it's written immediately. But when you do a bad deed, do you know what happens? The angels on the right tell the angels on the left, don't write it yet. Perhaps this person will seek forgiveness just now. A little while later, the angels on the left say, can we write the deed? The angels on the right who are in charge, they say, no, not yet. Perhaps this person will seek forgiveness just now. That's the second time. A little while later, the angels on the left ask the angels on the right, can we write the deed? They say, no, he is perhaps he will seek forgiveness before he sleeps, before he reclines to his bed. And when a worshiper has reclined to his bed without seeking the forgiveness of Allah, then the angels say, write it down. We gave him the chance. The deed is written. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Look at the mercy of Allah. You do a good deed, it's written. You do a bad deed, there is a a small time before you can actually, before the deed is actually written against you, you're given a chance to seek tawbah. And like I said, this hadith is sahih. It's in sahih al jamia My brothers and sisters, that is the mercy of Allah. But it's your deeds, your deeds that make you earn the mercy of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever sees good in the book, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَيَقُولُ هَا أُمُقْرَأُ كِتَابِيَ As for the one who's given the book on the right hand on that day. The book of what? The book of deeds. It's called the book of deeds. As for the one who has been given the book of deeds on the right, he or she will say, read my book. I'm happy. On that day, you have the right to be proud, proud of your achievement. In the dunya, there's no pride. On that day, the pride is not a negative pride. It's more a happiness. 
Subhanallah. So this hadith Qudsi says, those who find goodness should thank Allah and those who find otherwise. Now, if you've heard me speak in some of my speeches, when I speak of Jahannam and hellfire, a lot of the times I, I don't call it Jahannam or hellfire. I don't know if you noticed. I'll, I'll let you in on something. Based on this hadith, I always say, if you do good, you will get paradise. And if you do bad, perhaps, perhaps what? If you do good, you will get paradise. Perhaps you will find yourself elsewhere. Perhaps you, have you heard me say that? A lot of times I've said this. Perhaps we use the word elsewhere, somewhere else, something else. Because you know what we're referring to. But because we are hopeful of the mercy of Allah, sometimes we don't want to say it. Just in order to instill hope in the, in the hearts of the people. Taken from this hadith, Allah says, وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ فَلَا يَلُمَنَّ إِلَّا نفسه. Allah says on one hand, whoever does good should thank Allah because they're going to see the goodness. And whoever found anything besides that should only blame himself or herself. Wow, what mercy of Allah. Allah didn't say whoever finds bad should blame himself. Allah says, if you found good in your book, you must thank Allah. And if you found anything besides that, then you have none to blame besides yourself. That's what the hadith says. May Allah help us to do good deeds. So that was the last part of the hadith. It goes to show the power. It goes to show how important deeds are. The power of these deeds when it comes to calling on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me take you to the first part of that hadith. Although it's not part of our topic, but it's the same hadith. Hadith Qudsi. It starts off by saying, Ya ibadi, inni harramtu dhulma ala nafsi, wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharraman fala tadhalamu. O oh my worshippers, Allah is saying, I have prohibited wrongdoing and oppression upon myself. Upon myself. So do not oppress one another. Do not wrong one another. A dhulm would refer to injustice and any form of evil and oppression is called dhulm. So Allah is saying, oh my worshippers, I'm not going to wrong you, I'm not going to oppress you, and I don't oppress anyone, and I have prohibited oppression upon myself. So you do not oppress each other. Don't be bad to each other. Be good, be kind, be just, etc., etc. Ya ibadi, O oh my worshippers, kullukum dalun illa man hadaituhu fastahduni ahdikum. O my worshippers, all of you are astray except those whom I have guided. So seek my guidance and I will guide you. Powerful words from Allah, showing you that Allah is in control. When I started off here, I said, He who is in absolute control of every aspect of existence. You want guidance, two things need to happen. You need to try and use the capacity and capability given to you by Allah to search for the guidance and to ask for the guidance. And secondly, no, number one is to search for it and number two is to ask for the guidance. So the strength and energy I have, where is it from? It's given to me by Allah. So what should I use it for? To search what Allah asked me to search for. I'm searching for the guidance. Today you are here. You could have been anywhere else. You could have gone to the malls and the balls, wherever else you wanted to go. Entertain yourself on a Sunday. But you chose to use the capacity given to you by Allah to contribute towards this event. May Allah accept it from you. And to come to this event, may Allah forgive you and I and grant us Jannah. Ameen. Say Ameen. So what did you do? You didn't just sit at home and say, Oh Allah, guide me. Oh Allah, guide me alone. Allah says, I gave you the energy. Okay, we will guide you, make an effort, get up, use the power we gave you. And we asked you to go and to do X, Y, and Z. You did it. MashaAllah. If you did it, good news. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Those who strive and struggle in our cause to come to us, we will open the doors of guidance for them. Allah will not open the doors of guidance for a person who doesn't try. He doesn't even look for the guidance. He doesn't even want it. Allah says, you want guidance? Well, 
work towards it, try to achieve it, you have to do the TRY, we will do the rest. You have to try, we do the rest. That's why every single day we say, in every unit of salah, not in every salah, in every unit of salah, we are asking Allah, guide us to the straight path, guide us to the straight path, guide us to the straight path. Why? Because that guidance, Allah alone owns it. He says, Kullukum dalun, illa man hadaytuhu fastahduni ahdikum. All of you are astray, except those whom I have guided. So seek my guidance and I will guide you. Hence, we say, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Oh Allah, guide us to the straight path. May Allah guide us to that. Then the hadith continues to say, Kullukum arin illa man kasawtuhu fastaksuni uksikum. All of you are nude, naked, unclothed, except those whom I have clothed, whom I have covered. So seek that cover, that clothing from me, and I will cover you. Subhanallah. You know, nudity. When we say nudity, those who are unclothed, those who are exposed. Who will cover you from that exposure? Allah. So seek cover from Allah. He will cover you. Whether it is covering your body or your faults or both. Seek it from Allah. Allahumma sturna. In fact, when it comes to kiswa, when it comes to the term that is used, it is referring to your clothing more than your dignity and anything else. But a deeper meaning would also include being exposed. So we seek from Allah because Allah is the one who will cover you. Allah is the one who will grant you. Allah is the one who will clothe you. Ya ibadi kullukum ja'i'un illa man at'amtuhu fastat'imuni ut'imkum. Oh my worshippers, all of you are hungry besides those whom i have granted food to so seek food from me and i will feed you allahu akbar it means food and clothing accommodation everything is from allah thank allah for what he gave you by doing deeds and by thanking him verbally as well if you don't thank him he may take away what he's granted you how many people have had homes and houses and ownership of property and land and overnight in a second it was gone whether it was an earthquake a tsunami a natural disaster whatever else or just a deal that's gone sour overnight from riches to rags we've heard so many of those stories but do we take heed the answer is unfortunately not as we should Take heed, my brothers and sisters. Do your deeds. Let's do deeds for the sake of Allah. And a good sign that your deeds are being accepted by Allah is that your deeds bring about humility and humbleness within you. If I'm fulfilling salah and I'm arrogant on my way out, there's something wrong with my salah. Because salah itself should prohibit you from fahsha and munkar, from that which is evil, sinful and immoral. So if your salah is not preventing you from that which is evil, immoral and sinful, there is something wrong with your deeds. Change yourself. Do your deeds and become humble. Those of us who cover properly, those of us who read Quran every day, those of us who read five salah a day, watch your attitude because that is the trap door of shaitan. He traps you through that. That's the hadith I spoke about earlier. The hadith of the bankrupt person who comes with a lot of deeds, but they have wronged this one and cheated that one and deceived that one, eaten the wealth of this one. So their good deeds are given and they are taken and given to those whom, who were wronged such that no more good deeds left. So the bad deeds of those who are remaining are actually now going on to this person. Subhanallah. That's why we say, my brothers, my sisters, man ja'a bil hasana, falahu ashru amthaliha. Whoever brings a good deed on the day of judgment, and it was not taken away by bad that they did against someone, that it was dished out to someone else, you were able to protect your deed after you did it. Allah says, we're going to multiply it for you by 10 and even more than 10. Now, do you understand what is meant by coming with a good deed? 
Subhanallah, you come with it. Not, you don't just do it. You do it and you protect it after you do it like a jewel. You make sure that you have surrounded it properly and no one must take my deed. People are backbiting, say, I'm not backbiting. You walk away with your deeds, subhanallah. But people were backbiting and you backbit with them. What did you do? Your salah went, your zakah went, your hajj went, everything is gone. You walk out, you got no more deeds left, subhanallah. What happened? You didn't be careful. You didn't, you had su'udhan. When, when people spoke about others, you thought the worst of them. What's wrong? Your heart needs to be cleansed. Didn't we speak about qulubikum, your hearts earlier on? The deeds of the heart. I'm sure we spoke about that earlier today. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. And this is why I want to end this beautiful hadith where the Prophet, where the Prophet ﷺ says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh my worshippers, you will never be able to harm me no matter what you do. And oh my worshippers, you will never be able to benefit me no matter what you do. Oh my worshippers, if all of you were as pious as the most pious person's heart on earth, it would not increase me in anything. And oh my worshippers, if all of you were as sinful as the most sinful heart on earth, you would not decrease from my kingdom and my property and from me anything. Allah is showing you how powerful he is. You do deeds, it's for yourself, not for Allah. When I worship Allah, it's not going to increase Allah's value. When I don't worship Allah, it's not going to decrease Allah's value. It's, doing with, it's to, to do with my value, me and I. Subhanallah. So do your deeds because it's you. Then do you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? Amazing. May Allah bless us all. Say Ameen. Oh my worshippers, if from the beginning, the first person, right up to the end, the last person, all of you were to gather in one place and every single one of you were to ask me whatever he or she wanted from the beginning, right up to the end. And I were to give every single one of you whatever he or she wanted. It would not displace from my kingdom and ownership except that which a needle would displace when it is put into the ocean. Subhanallah. You understand the kingdom of Allah? Allah is showing us who is the owner, who is the boss. Allah is showing us who is the supreme, who is the inevitable, who is the maker, the power of the creator, the power of the one we are going to return to. He says, all of you, not just you on earth today, the six, seven, eight, ten billion, whoever and how many ever. Not just you. The trillions who existed from the time of Adam, the gazillions, the Filipinillions that existed. Subhanallah. Sorry, that's just a number I created because we're in Philippines. From the time of Adam going all the way down to the end of time, if everyone was gathered in one place and Allah gave every single one of you what you asked for, what you wanted, everything you wanted was given to you. Allah said, you know what? It will not displace from our ownership anything. That's what he's saying. The example he gives only by way of example, not that it displaced anything at all, but just to show you and I that you know what? When you throw a needle in an ocean, how much water is displaced? Well, you know what? That is what the example is given of. If Allah were to give everyone everything, it would not displace except that much, which means not even, nothing. That's what it means. It would displace zero. When you put a needle in an ocean, it displaces nothing. Actually, it's irrelevant. It's negligible, totally negligible. And yet we think we're a big deal and we think we don't have to do deeds. Subhanallah. I end with one beautiful example. A true story. My brothers and sisters, you, I'm sure, have visited remote parts of your country. I have visited remote parts of Africa. Wallahi, I have seen people who have nothing. Nothing. No house, no clothing, meaning very, very, very little food. They don't know where it's going to come from. And I've seen them so happy and so content. No phones, no gadgets, no makeup, no perfume, no accessories, no handbags, no cars, no whatever, whatever, nothing. They're so happy, so excited. 
And I've seen them worship Allah in an amazingly beautiful way. I've been to remote parts of Africa that have made me weep, weep for days on end. When I've heard and seen little children do deeds and their parents beautifully teaching them and the melodious recital of the Quran, which would be better than most of us, including myself. And you hear a small child in the middle of nowhere that barely has food and pure water to drink. And they're reading, and you start thinking to yourself, Allahu Akbar, Ya Ilaha Al-Alameen, these are the true slaves of yours. We think we're a big deal. We don't even read Salatul Fajr on time. Some, some of us don't even read Salatul Fajr, forget about Salah. Some of us wouldn't even be bothered about trying to do things that would please Allah. Some of us are so affected by the environment around us that we are more embarrassed to face people than to face Allah. So we give up what would please Allah because we want to please the people. That is so embarrassing. Yet there are people who have nothing in this world or very, very little in this world. And wallahi, their deeds are mountains, mountains of deeds. Where are we? Why do we think we're a big deal? I am humbled when I see the people travel on earth, travel in your own country, go to places, see people and learn from people. And then you will realize that, you know what? We need a lot of help. The hadith says materialistic items. Look at those who have less than you for you to appreciate the favors of Allah. But religious matters and matters of the deen. Look at those who are higher than you so that you realize how much effort needs to be made upon yourself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness in the dunya and the akhirah. I pray that we can love each other for the sake of Allah. I pray that we can do deeds and purify our hearts. A sign of your good deeds really being accepted by Allah is your heart becomes softened. If your heart is becoming hard, there's something wrong with you. When you start hating your brothers and sisters, there is something wrong with you, no matter who, no matter what. I've seen religious people, knowledgeable people, preach and promote hatred and saying that is Islam. No, 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 no way, not at all. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Moses, Musa alayhi salam to the Pharaoh, he told him to speak with softness, with kindness, to speak to him in a beautiful way, to remind him. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam spoke to the enemies, he spoke to them with respect. There is a lot that we need to learn from. Remember, your heart is softened when you get closer to Allah. One day we may talk about that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a new beginning in such a way that our good deeds carry forth and our bad deeds are wiped out.